couple weeks ago, we told this story. Could anything be worse? That's the oldest version of the story that I have. And then we told it could always be worse. And because that's the next oldest, both of these were published when I was around your age, Shira. It's pretty crazy. Did you know I was your age one time? Long time ago. And I have all of these other versions of this story. I have the little, little house and just enough and not much and oy vey, shoo. And I have a big house. All these different versions, the same story. Today, I'm going to tell you a very modern version of this story. It is called Terrible, Terrible. And thanks to archive.org, I was able to use their version of the story online. So here we go. Terrible, Terrible. A folktale retold by Robin Bernstein, pictures by Shana Mooney Kawasaki, and published by Carbet. I'll love you forever, Abigail's mother said, but she wasn't talking to Abigail. I'll always love you too, said Abigail's new stepfather, and they slid rings on each other's fingers. Together, they stamped on a glass wrapped in a dish towel, and everyone shouted, Mazel tov! Can you shout that with me? Mazel tov! Mazel tov! But Abigail didn't shout. She bit her lip, as she always did when she was worried. Right after the wedding, she and her mom would move in with her stepfather and four new stepsisters and brothers, seven people in all. Abigail was the youngest. Living with so many people wasn't easy. Ab every time Abigail wanted to use the bathroom, someone was already in it. If she wanted to watch TV, someone already turned it to a different channel. If she had her heart set an apple, someone had already eaten the last one. And worst of all, there was no place for Abigail to be alone. House is too much. Every corner was stuffed with people and junk. Can't get a big said Abigail's mom. You can't get rid of the people, said her stepfather, and I like the junk. If I come up with some ideas, will you try them? Abigail asked. I promise we will, her mom said. Yes, her stepfather agreed. This house is a little cramped for my taste too. The wisest person Abigail knew was the rabbi. The rabbi could solve any problem, big or small. She could bless a baby, console the bereaved, and sing a tune so beautiful that all who heard it would rise to their feet and dance. The rabbi could help her. Rabbi, Abigail said, I have a problem. My mother and my stepfather and my four new brothers and sisters and I live in a tiny house. Everybody's crammed in so tight. I can't walk across the room without tripping my brother's feet or my sister's knees, but there's no money for a bigger house. Rabbi, what should I do? Rabbi thought deeply. Then she spoke. Do you and your siblings have any bicycles? She asked. Sure, said Abigail. And so do my parents. 
we keep them in the garage. Bring them into the house, said the rabbi. But there's no room, Abigail cried. The house will burst at the seams and fall into a pile of matchsticks. Trust me, said the rabbi. Bring bicycles into the house. Oops. So, Abigail trapped all seven bicycles into the tiny house. She placed two in the kitchen, one against the refrigerator, the other against the stove. She found room for two more in the living room, stacked up on top of the couch. If there are bicycles on the couch, where are the people going to sit? Who do you think, Shira? Where are the people going to sit? Um, on top of the bicycles. Oh my gosh. They're going to sit on top of the bicycles, on top of the couch. Oh, oh my gosh. She balanced one in the hall and hung one from the ceiling. In the bathtub. What are they going to do? Are they going to be able to take... Will they have to take a bath with a bicycle? Oh my gosh. This is what the rabbi advised? Abigail's mother asked. Maybe she was joking. The rabbi does not like joke. Oh, the rabbi does like jokes, Abigail. Is. But I think he was serious this time. Remember, you promised to try my ideas. He did promise, her stepfather said grimly, and they let the bicycles stay. By the next day, everything was worse. There was no place to cook or read or bathe or have a civilized conversation. So what do you think Abigail's going to do, Shira? Just leave the bikes in the house? Yeah, go, and go to the rabbi. Oh, that's a good idea. Rabbi, said Abigail, I know I saw you only yesterday, but today I'm thinking maybe I misunderstood you. I brought the bicycles into the house, but it's terrible, terrible, worse than before. Oh, I think you have to say that with me. Terrible, no, terrible, terrible, worse, worse than, than before. before. Rabbi, what should I do? Rabbi's going to tell her to do. Maybe take the bicycles out. Maybe take the bicycles out. What? Maybe bring more things in. Uh oh. Maybe bring more things in. I think it's definitely going to be one of those two. Let's see. The rabbi thought for a long moment and then she asked, Do you have any pets? Uh oh. What's she going to say? Yes, said Abigail, have three cats and two dogs, a rabbit and a guinea pig. We keep them in the backyard. Bring them, what is she going to say? What's the rabbi going to say? Into your house. <laughs> Bring them into the house. <gasps> rabbi, Abigail guessed, there's no room. The house will splinter into sawdust and pipes. But the rabbi would not budge. When Abigail's mother came home and found her letting the guinea pig loose in the kitchen, her mother shouted, if the rabbi isn't joking, she's playing a cruel joke. The rabbi is fond of tricks, Abigail answered, but she says this will help us. Our home ruined, yelled her mother, and she appeared to be right. The dogs raced all over the house, whisking toys off shelves in their, with their wagging tails. The cats clawed the furniture. The bunny and guinea pig were nowhere to be found. But signs of them were everywhere. Well, 
Rabbi, said Abigail, yesterday I did as you advised, but it's terrible, terrible, terrible. worse than before. Good job. The dogs bark, the cats meow, and the rabbit and the guinea pig are suspiciously quiet. We're smushed together like pickles in a jar. Rabbi, what should I do? What do you think Shira Rabbi is going to say? Put more things in your house. Oh, no, I hope you're wrong. Let's see. The rabbi thought and asked, do you have any cousins? Yes, said Abigail, dozens of cousins. Invite them to visit, said the rabbi. You can't be serious, said Abigail, but the rabbi was. When Abigail confessed that she had invited all of the cousins to stay, her mother bellowed, I changed my mind. The rabbi isn't joking and she isn't playing a trick. She's crazy, pure and simple. Sometimes the wisest people seem crazy, Abigail answered, but even she was beginning to have her doubts. I know we promised to try your ideas, her mother said, but a rumble drowned out the sound of her mother's voice. It was the sound of a thousand stomping feet. Who do those feet belong to? The cousins. Oh no, oh no. Oh my gosh, look at all those cousins. Hello, shouted the cousins as they poured into the house. Oof, said Abigail as a cousin stepped on her toe. Then her stepfather, as another cousin elbowed him in the stomach, the cousins were marching in, unstoppable as a spring flood. Twenty cousins crammed in the living room, fifteen more stepped into the kitchen, and eight jammed into the bathroom. They ate every bit of food, they played loud music, and they danced till dawn. The next day, Abigail's mother called out weakly, please, Abigail, she begged, please send the cousins away. I'm going back to the rabbi, Abigail said, oh, although it was difficult to inflate her lungs enough to speak. Abigail climbed over the dozens of cousins and escaped through the bathroom window. Rabbi! Abigail wheezed, flexing her numb arms and legs. Rabbi, I took your advice, but it's, here we go, terrible, terrible, terrible. terrible. worse than before. The house is so crowded. I can't lift my hand to wipe away my tears. I hear the cats crying, but I can't look for them because I can't move a single step. My family has disappeared under piles of bicycles and pets and cousins. The walls moan, the floors groan, and I'm scared it will split. Rub. Help us before we lose everything. And and some not for more. Wise rabbi smiled. What do you think she's going to say? Keep the things out of your house. Ooh, you, you're so wise. You could be a rabbi. That's exactly what she says. Tell her cousins to go home, she said. Take your three cats, your two dogs, and your guinea pig and return to the backyard. Walk your seven bicycles to the garage. Find your family and cook a meal together. Eat it and then clean up together. Oh, Rabbi and Abigail, that's just what I thought you'd say. So Abigail returned to her house, which was growing around like a balloon about to burst. She opened the front door and teen cousins spilled out. Excuse me, pardon me, 
as shouted as she elbowed her way into the living room where the cars were still. Abigail picked up the radio and started a combo line. The cousins joined hands and followed her as she danced them through the living room, down the hall, and finally out the front door. Then Abigail handed the radio to a tall cousin and she watched as the crowd danced joyously down the street and into the twilight. Abigail found her mother and her stepfather and her four brothers and sisters slightly dented, but unharmed. The three cats, the two dogs, the rabbit, and a pig crept out cautiously. Everyone walked a bicycle back to the garage, and then they went to the market and each chose one thing to eat. A loaf of bread, carrots, peanut butter, pickles, apples, and grape juice. Abigail chose graham crackers. When they got back to the house, the door swung open easily. Nothing's blocking it, Abigail mentioned, marveled. They brought food into the kitchen and laid it out. Look how much space there is, Abigail's mother said. Our food fits on the table and we have enough chairs for us. After dinner, everyone cleaned up. Abigail left the kitchen and said, I never realized how big this floor was. Her stepfather swept the hall, which now seemed cavernous. Her siblings picked up the fallen toys and books and her mother scrubbed the bicycle grease out of the bathtub. Maybe we let the pets back. Abigail suggested, and everyone thought it was a marvelous idea. They brought back cats and the two dogs, the pig and the rabbit, and everyone agreed that their lives were wonderful, wonderful, better than before. Yay!